In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. My goodness, what a week. Leading up to Easter during the season of Lent, we here at St. John's have been considering what does it mean to live a Lent in love? And we've been asking this question, what does love have to do with any of this? And throughout the past Holy Week, through Palm Sunday and Maundy Thursday and Good Friday and Holy Saturday, we discovered that love has everything to do with it. Love is the reason for these stories and these traditions because Jesus, the Christ, the Word made flesh, is love. Love is the Word, and love is the whole story. Amen. Yesterday morning, I came up to the church offices and found not the silence of a tomb, but I found the church buzzing in preparation for today. As I opened the church doors, I heard beautiful sounds of instruments and voices singing. And then as I looked around the corner, I saw people tending to our precious altar and setting out flowers and dropping off Easter eggs and treats, making sure that everything was just right for this morning's celebration. Pause. Thank you to everyone who was here. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you so much. What a beautiful day. Thank you. Well, yesterday, as I looked in and I looked around, I couldn't help but smile. I smiled because these people and this place is so very dear to me. But more than that, I smiled because I felt that I was in the presence of a long line of faithful people who have tended to the body of Christ. And as I stood there smiling, not being very useful, just smiling at this point, I saw in them the face of Mary Magdalene one of Jesus's closest friends who we heard about in this morning's gospel. Mary Magdalene was a woman who stood at Jesus's side throughout his earthly ministry. She traveled with him throughout the Judean countryside and supported Jesus everywhere he went. And in our gospel reading this morning, we're reminded that it was Mary Magdalene who through the care that she offered, Jesus's body was the first to know the risen Christ. And so this morning in the presence of so many faithful saints among us, I'd like for us to take a moment to think about the resurrection from Mary Magdalene's point of view. So let's jump into our scripture reading this week. Just prior to this morning's gospel reading, Mary Magdalene had had a week. And I mean a week, you all know what I'm talking about. On the Sunday that we've come to know as Palm Sunday, Mary was there as the crowd shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, which means hooray for the king. She must have bubbled up with joy as her dear friend was celebrated. But the heights of her joy soon gave away. By Thursday, Jesus began to act very strangely, more so than usual. He said things like, the time is coming when I will no longer be with you. And as he ate dinner with his closest friends, he told them that every time they shared a meal of bread and wine, they were to do so in remembrance of him. It was that same night that Jesus told his followers that the greatest commandment 
was to love one another just as I have loved you, Jesus said. And so Mary Magdalene knew during the week that things were about to change. And so the strangeness, the foreboding that she felt during the week soon gave away to horror and despair. As on Friday night, Jesus was arrested, tried, and though he was found innocent by Roman authorities, he was mocked and beaten and put to death. The body of her Jesus was sealed in a tomb. Mary, a devout Jewish woman, would have spent Saturday, the Sabbath, in mourning waiting in anticipation for Sunday when she could tend to Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene anticipated that the sun would rise and she would return to the tomb with fresh linens and spices. And so even in his death, the love that Mary showed for the body of Christ was evident through her presence and her care. This was the same love, the same care that I recognized in this place, not only yesterday, but in so many days that I have spent with you. Now, unlike Mary Magdalene, our preparation was done in resurrection hope. And though the knowledge that a great celebration was coming today on Sunday, she didn't quite have that same joy yet. Though Mary Magdalene had heard Jesus say quite a few times that he would rise again on the third day, how could she have possibly anticipated what that meant? She couldn't. And so Mary woke up on Sunday morning, she gathered her linens and her spices, and before the sun even rose, she set off in the darkness to the tomb. And when she arrived, when she got there, she looked around and quickly saw that things were not as she had left them. I imagine the pit in her stomach and the horror on her face. Haven't they done enough? Can't they leave my Jesus alone? What has happened now? So she ran to go get some of Jesus' closest friends, and they came along with her. And together they saw that the tomb had indeed been opened and the body of Jesus was not there. And they left and they returned to their homes with heavy hearts, except for Mary. Mary stayed back. This woman had been through it and she had enough. Mary fell to her knees and she wept. And as she wept, she looked up again. And the scripture says that there were now two angels standing where Jesus' body has, had been lying. Why are you weeping? One of them asked. She said, they have taken my Lord and I don't know where they have put them. Folks, this was a desperate woman who longed to see and feel her Jesus. She just wanted to touch her friend one last time to pour out her love and her care. And that's when she heard a different voice repeat that time. Woman, why are you weeping? And that's when Mary got really upset. She looks up and thought the man speaking was the gardener. Jesus came looking in that way. And she says, if you have him, if you did this, give him back. And the man speaks her name. He says, Mary. And with that, at the sound of her name, the tears of her deepest sorrow are changed in an instant to joy. Rabuni, teacher, she says. And Mary gives Jesus just the biggest hug. Jesus tells her to go on and go tell everybody. So that's what she does. Mary Magdalene 
the world's first preacher and the first person to know the joy of the risen Christ. In the days and the weeks that followed, there was an explosion of chatter throughout the region. News spread that this Jesus who was crucified and buried was no longer dead. Today, there remains so much artwork and fragments of that conversation left to us in that time period, indicating that something did in fact happen. Real events unfolded in an instant and the world was left to figure out what it meant. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? No one's ever done that before. What does that mean? And the response that kept coming up over and over and over again was that the resurrection of Jesus is not a metaphor. It is not an analogy. It is not some fairy tale. The man Jesus who was dead is now alive again. The heart that stopped now beats with warm blood. The lungs that gave out now breathe. The feet that were nailed are now walking and the hands that were pierced in the gospel story here cradle Mary's face. And the only response we could possibly have like that of Mary is to run. Go tell it, sing it out that Jesus is alive. Because the body of Jesus, living and breathing when once it was not, changes everything, changes all of history. In his flesh, Jesus joins humanity in our personhood, in his living, he declares all of creation holy. In his suffering, Jesus refused to let go of the sacred bond found in the human family. In his dying, Jesus joins us in the depth, in the very deepest darkness to say, my love is unshakable. I will never let you go. No matter what that dark time looks like for you, I will never let you go. I am with you this day and in your darkest hour. And because this holy love is so unshakable, because Jesus refused to let go of humanity, even when humanity offer its worst, Jesus reached down into depth itself and said that it is love, not death, that gets the final say. There is a love that is stronger than death, that can withstand any amount of trial, a love that says in the very face of evil, no more, it is finished. And so on this Easter Sunday, we celebrate because thanks be to Jesus Christ, we are not joined to death but to the God who is alive, the God who loves us, who will never leave us, and who brings us back to life every single time. We celebrate because it is love that gets the final word, because love is the word made flesh in the very person of Jesus Christ. See how we're joined there in that personhood together? Jesus Christ, the word that is the alpha, the first word. Jesus Christ, who is the omega, the last word, is the story in between. And he is the love that, lo that knows no end. And so this morning we say amen, amen, hallelujah. And amen.